Hi you guys, it's Brittany here. I've had a lot of thoughts lately. God's been really dropping some things into my spirit. There's a lot of urgency with everything going on if you really pay attention to what's going on in the world right now. Basically, it's the last days and the last hour. We're in like the last minutes of the last days and I kind of just wanted to go over that a little bit. So grab some coffee, grab some tea, grab some vegan meals, and we'll just discuss. Bible prophecies are playing out hardcore right now like never before, all simultaneously. We got earthquakes, crazy earthquakes. God has really personally let me know that he's coming. and. I just really want to wake everyone up because I already see the great delusion starting to unfold and it's concerning with all the alien things. I mean, we thought COVID was bad. Oh my gosh, that's nothing. That's a warm up. This is going to be really bad and I am leaving when Jesus calls me no matter what, but I would like to have some peace of mind. When the great tribulation hits, realistically, most people will be going to hell. I mean, that's just the odds. Most people worship the beast system, all about themselves, narcissism, and the Antichrist way over God and Jesus's. They're all about the lie over the truth. That's just the way it goes. But it's going to be so hard to turn to Jesus once the Great Tribulation hits. Because the pressure, the delusion, the masses, <laughs> it's just going to be wild. And right now it's easy to turn to Christ. So if people are having trouble doing it then, you know, it's easy to say, oh, I'll just do that later. I'll just repent on my deathbed. I'll just do whatever I want. And then whenever I feel like changing, I'll change. But that's not how it goes. Because the more you sin and travel down that road, the further you get, then you start to become delusional. The brain heart connection starts breaking. Your connection to God, it's getting weak, it's getting farther apart. The way that sin works and the enemy, it blinds you to the truth. So it gives you something else to where it, it seems crazy to you and you just disregard that. It's a delusion that's God like leaving you to the reprobate mind. The enemy has an excuse and a counter argument. And the further you get away, the easier. And you have all these chains and bondages and shackles. You think, oh, it's just cigarettes. Oh, it's just drinking. Oh, it's just weed, this and that. But then all these little things, it's a chain here, a chain here. And then it's multiple and then it's more times a day and then you need more and you're just then in chains and then you you got all these holes in your aura and demons can come through and then you're in a desperate place then you're hanging out with people who have demons and then their demons are coming onto you and it's just this whole cycle it's like quicksand it binds you and it captures you and it's like the house of cards to where you don't even realize you're sinning or it's a big deal or everything's fine. I'm not getting punished, so this is fine. Everything's working out. Then it's that house of cards. It all just falls and collapses. <sighs> it's kind of like the legal system, which all the physical here, it does come down from the spiritual first. So it is similar and you could use those as analogies. The justice system here, with your right hand on the Bible, swear to God and tell the truth the whole truth nothing but the truth so help me god in court and all that god's courtroom so say if you're dealing with a case like there's a killer brian koberger let's look at that for example he was free for over a month after the quadruple homicide over a month because since they didn't catch him in the act doing it they had to have a case they don't want to just jump on it when they have something so minuscule because then what could happen is you're letting the other party know that, oh, we're on to you, we have this, this, and this. And then they get their lawyers and the defense is already on it as well. So you don't want to show your cards. So they have to build this whole case and then they have the affidavit, which they need the approval to arrest them. The evidence to show that it's him. It's a lot. And so they show all of this. They basically stalk them. They get DNA. They're watching them. They're on them. The police are monitoring them. They're, it's this whole colossal thing behind the scenes. While Brian thinks, oh yeah, they don't have anything. Because he hasn't heard that. The public hasn't heard that. Because that's how it works. That's how you have to catch him. Especially this type. He's a violent 
psychotic predator, you have to ensure that you're going to get him and get him to keep him. So you go about it very strategically. The law, the legal system, God, God is very strategic. So he will have this whole colossal army behind the scenes after you, building a case, watching you, monitoring you, taking notes, recording, getting DNA, every single little thing following you, cameras, and you won't know otherwise. Brian Kober was talking to a neighbor and he's like, yeah, you know, it looks like they don't have anything. Like he literally thinks they don't have anything. <laughs> what? Oh man, how foolish. But that's how it works. And then all of a sudden, you go from free to in jail for the rest of your life. In an instant. You're sleeping. And they have on the heart house. That's how it works. That's how heaven and hell works. That's how karma and these things work. So you have to be very careful. It's a trap. It binds you. And it clouds the judgment kind of lets you have these wins and you think you're winning and then that's why pride comes before the fall because you're all up there like yeah I got them ha 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 laughing it up like celebrating your wins and then all of a sudden the rug gets pulled out right from underneath you nope and then it's over completely over and the case is already built miles long while well, you had no idea because it has to be that way does that make sense honestly this stuff has happened to me when I was worldly and I got too worldly and I started really going against God so I know this from experience and it's very scary it's an inescapable hell domestic relationship they don't come at you like oh yeah I'm a woman abuser killed my last girlfriend I got this rap sheet <laughs> I can tell you that they come love bombing they study you they come with the knight in shining armor the complete opposite that's how Satan presents himself as an angel of love and light it's all a trick and deceit. He comes as godly, that fake anointing. This day and age, it's all about the sparkles, like the makeup, and this and that, and the diva. It's faking an anointing. If you have the anointing of God, it's your soul that carries you, and it's not necessarily all about that, right? That's why God's about modesty, natural, purity, the soul. He sees the heart. That's what matters. And that anointing, you'll have that shine, and all that stuff won't matter. But... When you don't have that heart and soul and you're out for narcissism and greed and taking people for their money and pride and ego and trying to show off and scam people and get one over on people and look cool and all this antichrist system, you're going to have that fake anointing, fake makeup and sparkles and shine and you need to do the most because like, trying to trap people and lure them a Jezebel spirit, trying to like, home wreck and be greedy, narcissism and fake that anointing. The Euphrates River dried up. Bible prophecy is coming out so hard right now, like never before. So since the Euphrates, there have been like 7,700 earthquakes all along that area in Turkey and Syria. There's also been a lot of reports of sounds and demonic spirits and entities when people have gone to basically where the Euphrates River was. It kind of opened up all these little portals. Yeah, creepy. Just like in the Bible, how the fallen angels like, were chained down there. And once the Euphrates dries up, then they're going to be released in the Great Tribulation with the seals and all that. And then all the earthquakes hit. Over 40,000 dead. And then over 45, I think just in that one, if not in that one, there was a bunch all around there. But of course the death toll was rising as they were just counting and finding the bodies they didn't know. And saving people that would obviously not be in the body count. But after so long, it's more of a body count than saving lives, unfortunately. So always pray for the people there. It's really sad. That mass death. It was totally the shape of a seven, which is God's number. Seven is huge in the Bible. Yeah, seven. Oh, and then that cloud that was right over it, like 18 days before that crazy huge one hit crazy so many crazy things are happening and then there's that giant sinkhole we're basically in world war three yeah all these china spy balloons russian and china submarines with nukes attached to them all around our borders yeah russia is spewing out propaganda 
saying basically they're at war with us. Fight this enemy. They think they're gods. We need to fight this evil. We're the only ones doing it. Join us. Be a hero. I know you've always dreamt of being a hero and fighting evil. Do that now with America. It's crazy, actually, because I have a lot of Russian viewers randomly on my YouTube that I've noticed. But I actually think I might post this on a new channel because my old channel, I started before I was reborn. There's some worldly, ungodly things there. It's the last days. Like, this is a lot of work. I feel like it's more work to clean it up. You don't want to delete everything because a lot of it's good stuff, but it all mixed in. And I don't know. You know what I mean? It's not like all of it's bad. But anyways, so I might just make a new channel. So then it might not be the Russians. But anyway, I'm praying for you guys. Um, please don't join to attack us because honestly, it's the guy and the new world leader, Satan, against the people. And we're the people and we should join Christ because they're the Antichrist system. <laughs> and yeah, it's not about the people. No one's gonna win out of this. We're entering the Great Tribulation. The only people who are going to win are individually with Christ. He's the only way out. I'm getting increasingly nervous of the great delusion. Of course, Satan's been working on this since the beginning of time. And it goes hand in hand, like all the lies and manipulations in the Matrix system. Like We never went to the moon, 9-11, veganism. Animal agriculture, all of these things, all just a lie and brainwashing and building up to get to this point to where his greatest trick ever is going to be the great delusion and so many people are actually going to believe it. And I'm so concerned because I feel like so many people actually already are, not just any people, Christians. And you know what? Realistically, a Christian in this day and age, a lot of people are Christians, but they don't want to carry up their cross. They'll wear the title, but they're lukewarm, okay? They're double agents, as my girl Chrissy likes to say. They serve both masters, and you can't serve both masters. And realistically, a lot of times it's way more heavy on the Satan side, because that's the world. So it's like if you go to church on Sunday, a little here and there, but... You're fornicating, you're getting with people, you're thinking that's cool and pride and ego and you're on OnlyFans making money off of this, <laughs> this and that, like on the regular, then that's what you're doing and some sins are heavier than others. Like there are things that are an abomination to God, like witchcraft and occult. A lot of Christians are into that. A lot of people don't know. A lot of people I think do know and don't care and pretend they don't know. Whatever. I'm starting to see a lot of people not believe that it's a pre-trib rapture. And that's fine to have different beliefs, of course. When I was reborn, obviously couldn't get enough of God and everything about him and Jesus. I was learning so much, the Bible, scripture, meditating on it, following the right people and pastors and prophets and everything. And just hearing different like arguments of what's going on in the world and putting it all together. <sighs> And so I went down that rabbit hole of pre-trib, post-trib rapture. And I've come to find, and I'm very sure and certain, not only through research, but through meditating it and taking it to God. I'm very close with God. We're like best friends and soulmates. So God's personally told me and let me know in a multitude of ways. I, I feel like I'm always dreaming about rapture and waking up about it. Visions. I had a vision, kind of all of that before... I even knew what it was before I was even reborn. Not too long before though, probably around like 2020, 2021, around that area. And then there's been more and I've asked him and taken things to him and fasted and he has poured down his spirit on so many people. <laughs> you can find this out through research and also then through research and seeking God and asking God and fasting and praying and obeying God, being obedient, abiding in God, praying. He will let you know. He wants to let you know. He is telling all of his people to tell everyone this with urgency. So he wants people to know. He wants people to repent and turn to him now because that door is closing and it is almost closed. 
Honestly, we are looking up every single day. It is a great day to be raptured today. <laughs> and, you know, yeah, that's bittersweet because I have stuff I still want to do. You know, I've just been reborn since 2021. So, man, I put this off. I just, I wish I had more time. But I have eternity with Christ. But I mean here and to save souls and work to do and how much work needs to be done. And anyways, I feel like a lot of people who seemingly are very into Christianity and the Bible and God don't believe in the preacher of rapture. And then I don't want to sound harsh or anything, but I almost feel like a lot of this is truly a lack of faith. Some of my family and people that I love, when you try to tell them and show them that it truly is the last days and the last hour, like this is not a false alarm. This is not a drill. I've never thought this or felt this before. That Y2K stuff, a joke or like a Hallmark thing. Ooh, some Mayan calendar ended. No one actually believed that. Honestly, I was around in that time. We were partying. It's like an excuse to party. <laughs> no one actually thought the world was ending. I'm sure some people did, but that there's always gonna, there's billions of people. <laughs> like, so that doesn't mean anything like a few here and there, or whatever. But people have never. Jesus is coming or Jesus is coming soon. Hashtag is top trending on Twitter right now. I guarantee that's never happened ever in the history of all time. What is that saying? It's mainstream now. That's crazy. These Bible prophecies have never played out like they are now. All of them. All at once. There's been over 2,000 prophecies since the Bible was written. The Bible was written like 2,000 years ago. The, the time frame has a lot to do with this as well. Jesus walked the earth about 2,000 years ago. He was crucified about 2,000 years ago. Right now it's 2023, so when Jesus came back before Christ, that's when the time started. I still want to look into some of this stuff a little more, but then he had his life where he served, and then his short little ministry for three and a half years before they killed him. He was 30, like young 30s, which, guess what year it is right now? 2023, okay. Agenda 2030, you will own nothing and be happy. Like, they tell you all this stuff. And they have to, like with the predictive programming, like Satan has to tell you, but obviously he's so deceitful, but they literally have like rules and regulations and legalities, just like demons. Like they can't really be in you. They need legal grounds. So that's why sinning and opening portals and fornicating and letting people who have demons have access to you and let them in all these things that's legal grounds. Yeah, it's awesome. I just, I love it. Jesus is coming back really soon, you guys. So please, okay, Jesus died for us. There is no middle ground. People think they could just opt out of this. If I don't believe, then it's not true. But that's not how it works. If you don't believe and you're an atheist, you're going to hell. Like, you have to, literally, you have to accept Jesus Christ. He's God. He created this earth, this sun, this sky. All good things, love, joy, peace, this beautiful scene and lake, life. God is the breath of life. So there is no life without him. It's God and you have to know the real one. You have to acknowledge or you're not going to spend it with him. And it's not like, okay, well, I'll just spend it on earth. No, because you die. This is just the test of where we're going to go. You don't stay here. This is nothing. This is no time at all. But still, you have a whole life to figure this out. God doesn't just strike you down when you sin. He's patient and long-suffering. So you have a lot of time to figure this out. You've been told. You've seen it. He makes sure of it. That's why the Great Commission. That's why we're sheepdog for Christ. But you can't just opt out of this. Not believing it doesn't change what is. Eternity is forever. And everything is magnified after here. The feeling, the colors, the life, the joy, the peace, the excitement. It's all magnified. Or unless you're in hell and you're being tortured. The pain, the suffering, the fear, the anxiety, the hopelessness. Because there's no hope. You're completely separated from God. It's not a party in hell. There is no sun. There is no light. There is no hope. There is no protector. There is no... 
it's complete separation from him because you denied him your whole life and chose hell. It's really sad and I'm worried about people and I can't believe it's an honor to be here at this time. It is so wild. We were here for a reason because we're capable of all the generations. People have been studying the Bible since the beginning of time and they all read about this and they can only dream about all the things that we're seeing now like a cashless society, the mark of the all these things it's like they can't even fathom and the technology and the advancements that we have now that are all here now coming to play. It's so crazy. It's now or never. I mean, in the Great Tribulation, I think there will be great revival. I know a lot of people will turn to Christ, but at that point, you're going to have to die for Christ. You're going to have to be beheaded. If you're not killed, millions of people will be killed immediately. And there's going to be nukes, bombs, everything's not going to be nuked because that's not going to be until the end end when Jesus comes back, end of the world, grand finale. So that's not going to happen. Not to say that there won't be some nukes. There could be nuked areas. Tons of earthquakes, tons of famine, tons of pestilences, disease, zombies, deadly fog, everything all at once. Just demons running rampant and wild. It's going to be bad. Many people will die, but also the Bible states many people will long for death and they won't be able to find it. They will want to die and they they'll still be alive. <laughs> Life will be so miserable and so on the brink of death and just horrible and inescapable. Pretty much you're going to have to die for Christ. You're not going to be able to function in this world. Christians are going to be persecuted, hunted down by the government. They're going to, they already have all these tracking devices to know if you're vaccinated or not. They can read the room of how many people are who's not, if you're not, all these technology. So yeah, they're going to have AI, AI robots after people, but then it's going to be the mark. Man, it's going to be crazy. And honestly, with 5G and this technology and all these nanoparticles and marks and stuff, they could just like whoosh, press a button and control you and take over. You will not have free will. You're going to be transhumanism, AI. It's it's going to be buck wild and I'm not going to be here for it. I am getting married to Jesus. We're going to be at the wedding feast. It's going to be vegan because that's the way of God. Life, gentle, kindness, love, protecting the good shepherd. So like that's a really big part of this too. Denying thyself, carry up their cross. I feel like that's a topic for another day and that triggers a lot of demons. But it's the truth. Okay, veganism brought me to the cross. They're all completely intertwined and related. So many people will say this too when they went vegan. Then they had that spiritual awakening. And they connected to God and the higher and truth. Very connected. Very awesome. So I can't wait for the vegan wedding feast. But you're going to want to be there and I really want you to too. So please just surrender your life to Jesus. Repent. Pray without ceasing. Repent daily. Live a constant daily life of repentance for things known and unknown. Sometimes I'll be like, I'm sorry. Like, I just want to please God and the Holy Spirit. I don't want to grieve it. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, but that evolves. So it's not like you live in a state of fear or anything. You don't want to. It's, it's like a loving relationship where you love this person. You don't want to grieve them or hurt their feelings. or You want to please them. <sighs> Not that that fear still isn't there or should go away. You have to know the power and the authority. And that striking, I mean, whew. Yeah, we should fear God. I just, like, love God so much. And I would not be here without God and Jesus. Literally, he saved my life. And that can go so many ways from since the beginning of time. And then you look back and you're like, oh, that was God. That was God. So many times at points where you could have died and it could have been so much worse. And it was so close. You blacked out and you started to cross over. Or you were freezing in the middle of January and you went canoeing and the canoe tipped. And then you're walking through the forest, freezing to death, body stopping, shutting down. Anyways, all these things. But then how about when demons are actively trying to kill you and Satan and gangs of demons literally killing you and you actually just surrender to God, finally just give up and can't do it anymore. God, and then it's like, no, 
no, not, no, not like this. And we're both, we're on the same page, like we're best friends. So it's like, here's the door to me, to God. You want to come through my door? Here, I can show you a way better way. And it's like, yeah. So then he sent me back. And yeah, that's where I was reborn. I could get into that a different day, but truthfully, I, it's the last day, so... I know this is just kind of all over the place. I've just been meaning to do this for a long time. And it's just, the world's really wicked. And so I used to YouTube a little more, but now it's like, I don't know. I just don't really like feel the way I did about it before. Of course, I'm reborn, so starting things new and differently, you kind of have to restart in a different way. I don't know. Just very different and restarting. And the world's really wicked and mean and course and you're working for Christ you attract demons and it's like a target yeah I know <laughs> sorry I'm going on a rant ah, I love you with the love of Christ fast pray veganism I know it's a whole journey but it's so awesome and so worth it and it's not as hard as you think with the correct knowledge Troll the pages, vegan, vegan for beginners, Facebook. Look at the comments. Look at the memes. I remember just staying up all night trolling the pages. Watch the documentaries. It will change your heart and your mind to where you don't want that anymore. You're repulsed by it. And the more you do it, the more you change. Knowledge is power. It's true. I grew up on all that stuff too. But at least start with no flesh. At least try start it's the best and it is christ and it's all related i actually got two of these shirts which random <laughs> the hat came first i don't know if i even ordered two or if they just gave me two or honestly i've done this before i probably i might have just ordered it again if the hat came first and i'm like oh did i not get this shirt like i need this because a lot of times you think about things anyways i have two <laughs> All right. I love you guys with the love of Christ. Sorry that was kind of all over the place. Hopefully I'll be back and I will improve. I'm just starting fresh reborn. These are urgent pressing matters. Please prioritize this. The great delusion and how I already see some Christians kind of like siding with this. I think realistically it's easy to believe in Christ theoretically when everyone's doing it for what they stand for it makes people feel better on some level to be a Christian whatever but you need to actually know that literally what he did for us was true you need to believe that with all your heart say it proclaim it this is a huge part of salvation but a lot of people are like do you really even believe that because it doesn't seem like it because that's crazy, right? Like, he literally was... And by the way, there is so much on this historical, historical documents. Not religious. Not even religious or the Bible or like the disciples or anything. There was the Dead Sea Scrolls, which was found way later from that time. Look into that. Basically, because they were being persecuted and crucified and all this. So people documented all this from that time and they hid them and they put them in the caves and they were found thousands of years later, hundreds of years, whatever, and it was from that time, and it's the time of the Bible, and the time of Jesus, and it correlates, except there is some things in there, too, about veganism, and how wars broke out over that, and eating meat, and all this stuff, the Romans persecuting people because of that, so that was a huge thing, and it was actually in there, and part of that, but anyways, there is more historical evidence of Jesus than Caesar ever living. Check out A Case for Christ. Check out Isaiah Salvador's seven reasons why Christianity is the one true main religion. That's a really good video. I have all these playlists too that actually I can share. Maybe I'll share in the description or something. God and Jesus and Christianity. And then also a last day's playlist and it's compilations of all these things. So there's gonna be a lot, but it's gonna be in there. So. It's easy to believe that happened or to say you believe or like in theory believe that that happened back then. But if you truly believe that, 
and have faith in God. He doesn't change that God is the same, that he has that power and that authority. And he is nothing short of a miracle all day, every day. He, he loves that man. He loves when the odds are against him. He loves giving people these crazy testimonies. That's why I feel like I have to tell mine and I haven't for a long time because I don't know, it's like personal and a lot of people, people are crazy these days and people, people don't believe and they'll call you fake and a Pharisee. And this is other people too that I see and stories of and other people talking about this and people get jealous of people's testimonies. It's really sad too. People in competition and just also too, I don't really like to tell too much about me now and my personal information. Like I'm very different. Yeah. But I do feel like I want to tell that and glorify God. And he gave that to me for a reason. And, you know, after it happened, it was a lot of healing and at the right time. And thinking that I have a whole life to live before realizing it's the last days. <laughs> and the last hour. Oh, and the last minutes. <laughs> um, so, yeah, there isn't much time. So I do want to put that out there. So why he can rise again come back to life three days later after he died. That's obviously proving that he beat death, that in Christ we truly do have eternal life, that he is alive and well and living. He can come back on earth just like me. I literally was being killed by demons for over six hours, okay? Beat up, strangled, throttled. Satan, it's so crazy. Satan himself, man. And I don't know, for a long time, it was almost like I, I could do this, the adrenaline, dealing with the circumstance. So I, I don't remember really asking God for help or turning to God. It was kind of like, okay, just get through. I don't know, thinking I could still do this or manage it. I'll figure this out. And then finally, I just couldn't get any more air for so long. And I just surrendered to God. And I was just so weak. And I was like, well, this is the result. I don't think there's escaping this guy. <sighs> You know, we die and we go back to God, our creator. And I was just like, God, oh man. <laughs> and so literally I did and I left my body and I thought of my mom and it was like, my mom, no, <laughs> she will not be okay. Not that type that's going to be okay after this. No. So I was like, oh, hell no. And I was like, put me back in, coach. And he, of course, you know, was like, okay, and agreed and on the same page. And literally then he pointed his finger down where we were. I'm getting strangled, dead. And put ideas in his head and softened his heart, changed his mind. And he was like, after so long... I tried this way earlier throughout the night, like, oh, you know, um, let's smoke a cigarette or here, let's smoke some weed or let's try to like talk this over or here, do you want this or that? Do you want a drink? Trying to, like, let's just calm and talk this over. We need to calm down and not kill me. And no, he was not having it. It's like, let's kill Brittany time. And over six hours of that, me, no way in hell escaping a giant over six feet or 5'11 or something the strongest person ever so many demons so many demons oh by the way demon slayer <laughs> all god all glory goes to god and i'm just honored to be a vessel of that if i could die and god could live through me that is such an honor and a privilege every day then it put this idea in his head oh so one time he gave me this drug and he told me to hide it dude he was like druggy okay so no he told me to get rid of it but for some reason i hit it i don't know because obviously this point in time this saved my life so many little things like that did then he was like do you still have that where is that let's let's get that it's like the date rape drug or something he druggies man they like date rape themselves i don't know probably date rape people too like maybe potentially me i don't know Okay, weird stuff, demons, abusive relationships, again, the tricks of the enemy, the traps, <laughs> and me being worldly, and not having discernment, and not having God, and having to learn these things, and to go through this so I can be a soldier for Christ, and he could call me back home, and I could do work, so it's awesome. But then, yeah, literally, God pointed his finger, 
break it up, let her go, free her. And at that point then, literally right there, that's when I escaped. At over six hours. This started at 4.30. This is like 11, 11.30 p.m. I'm like, okay, yeah, let's go get it, you know. So I'm leading the way or I'll go get it. Ah, oh, no, yeah, I don't trust you, blah, blah, blah. So drags me by my hair through the house to where it's at. Where's it at? Up the stairs. I'm getting rug burn all over my face and body. Of course, I'm naked and stripped down because he ripped my clothes off and was like trying to rape and kill me for... <laughs> Anyways, then we get to the room and I give it to him. And then I'm upstairs in a room. I'm not going anywhere really. I am, but... So then he takes a sip and walks out of the room and thank God again. So I go to lock the door, which I only have because I had a party way back when and I didn't trust people because who does? <laughs> I'm not a fool. No, anyways. <laughs> so I put locks on all the doors. So I had a lock. So I locked the door. Otherwise, like, you know, I didn't have that or need that otherwise. So then I locked him out and then I start, I put clothes on and I start jumping out the window basically to the neighbor or to try and I have this little awning on the top of my house so I was trying to jump onto that I don't know what I was trying to do I was trying to escape <laughs> we didn't break down the door or anything and get free and then right at that moment like I'm hanging out my window kind of almost trying to jump out of an awning like extremely obnoxious that you can tell you know it's not just someone looking out the window it's like someone trying to scaffold the house to get out of the window the house was burning or something and then so my neighbor pulls up right at that time and I'm like, Chris, neighbor, call 911, call the police, like help, <laughs> you know? Um, and so then he did. And there's my rescue mission. All God, all glory to God. I would not be here otherwise. Like that is not what they wanted. That is not what Satan and the demons wanted. They were trying to take me out. God stopped the mouths of lions. This was David and Goliath, Daniel and the lion's den stuff. So miraculous and so amazing. And that was just one of many times actually that year. There were literally so many other times and they were extremely extreme too, where God's hand was just all over it and all over me and just protecting me in the double layers of shields and sent Archangel Michael to fight. And, they whispered in my ear and it was like, just stay alive. And it was like, check his phone. And that was like the first time where I audibly heard God and like the Holy Spirit or like these angels. And I was just like, like just stay alive. Like, oh crap, what are we doing? <laughs> just stay alive. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. So basically I was like, just trying to stay alive, not fighting back. Um, not trying to necessarily escape because it was kind of hopeless. He's just so big and strong. Like, and so anytime those little things, it really triggers and irritates and someone's like in psychosis, like trying to kill you, there's just mad demons, black eyes. Sister Carrie Ann actually, she did a YouTube or a video on Satan. Um, she had a vision or I don't know, something. She's awesome. She's really on point. And Satan and what he looks like and bro yeah i straight up a satan but i was not alone i had god jesus the holy spirit archangel michael probably my ancestors and armies of angels because <laughs> i never would have had that otherwise if i was not in god oh my gosh just so lucky but yeah so this picture of satan then she showed a picture and i've never seen jeepers creepers but it was like the tree from Jeepers Creepers and it looked exactly like that and that's literally it. Like that's who I faced and not just once, multiple times. And yeah, I'll show you a picture of that, but absolutely crazy. God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit are so awesome and amazing. Best things ever. I just, it's amazing.